Okay, so for this week of awareness meditation training, uh, we're exploring emotions as doorways to recognizing and resting in awareness, much like we did thoughts. We work with thoughts. Um, also, as I gave uh, that talk a title of uh, working with thoughts as seeming obstacles to awareness, same thing here, working with emotions as seeming obstacles to awareness, okay? That's the context of awareness meditation training. There are a lot of ways we can work with emotions both inside of waking up and meditation, but also outside of that in practices of, uh, of healing, okay? But here we're really focused in uh, specifically on awareness meditation training and practice. So let's first start with the question, what are emotions in this context, okay? So in this context, in, in um, the Buddhist Geek Social Meditation Guide, we have um, some social meditations that kind of help us note and recognize sort of building blocks of experience. And um, we can talk about body sensations, charge, and then mind states. And really when all of those, we are involved in feeling of what we would just generally call a feeling in our daily life, whether it's happiness or anger or confusion. So let's look at each of these individually. Body sensations, we're talking about raw somatic information. So this is, you know, um, you know, could be relaxed muscles, tensed muscles. It could be heat, coolness in the body. Um, our heart rate, you know, slow, fast, irregular. These are all raw somatic experiences that we experience along with what we call a feeling. Charge would be the immediate base level reaction. It's kind of like the most basic level of reaction in our experience. And if this is, uh, there are three, and there's sometimes different terms, but essentially pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Positive, negative, neutral, okay? Um, these lead to uh, more uh, stronger emotions and, and reactions like desire, I want it, aversion, I don't want it, get it out of here. And um, indifference, I don't care, um, or ignorance, I'm not even aware of it, okay, to have a reaction. So that's charge. Then we get to mind states, and these um, vents uh, referred to mind states as uh, patterns of body-mind, which is really nice. So it's more complex here. And emotions are one type of mind state. We can have all kinds of mind states. Um, but, uh, you know, when we're talking about something like anger, we're going to have physical sensations, and then we're going to have a mental sense that overlays, uh, that interprets and overlays onto the, the raw experience. Okay. So, you know, we have our interpretation, concepts, stories. There's a lot that's involved in what, uh, when we're experiencing an emotion that we might label simply as anger, sadness, happiness. Now, if we look at anger as an example, you know, physically, we might notice tightness in, in our chest and muscles, tightness in the shoulders, tightness in the neck, tightness in the jaw. You know, there might be all kinds of physical experiences we're, happen we're having. Now, uh, we might have elevated heart rate, right? By themselves, though, we can experience all of these outside of anger. For example, if we work out. If I'm lifting a heavy weight right here above my head, I'll have all the same tightness, elevated heart rate, things like that, but it doesn't mean I'm experiencing anger in that moment. So again, this is a base level uh, component of a feeling. But then we have uh, the mental aspect, which can involve all kinds of things. You know, maybe we're dealing, we're angry in a relationship, we're angry at what we see in the news. You know, there's all kinds of things happening that might be very real, uh, and it's a real embodied response. It may be imagined, right? Like maybe we're creating a story about something or someone that isn't true, but there is the experience of there is anger. I am angry. Okay. Uh, so clearly we can see that there's a lot more happening uh, at the conceptual level. Uh, again, better or worse. Okay. We're not trying to label right now in this moment is anger good or bad. It's just like there is anger. Okay. We experience anger. We experience happiness, etc. Now, when we talk about working with feelings and mindfulness practice versus awareness uh, meditation, um, 
mindfulness really is going about emotions in a way that we just described. It's investigating and breaking down the components of this seemingly solid gripping experience. Like there's anger and maybe we feel that's all we notice like in our experience, like we're all just nothing but anger in that moment. So we investigate and look at it and say, okay, well, there's actually a whole bunch of different thoughts. There's a stringing together of thoughts into a pattern. Um, there's body sensations. And so we, by investigating this way, um, there's insight that can come from that, that we can see that the experience isn't as solid as what we imagine. And we loosen the grip, we get disentangled from it. Um, we can notice more spaciousness around it. And so part of that mindfulness practice is noticing moment to moment what's arising and passing in our experience. So there is a, there's a sense of analyzing, observing, there's intentionality. Okay, let me look in here. And I'm going to see what's going on and I'm going to note it. That's why we use that image in Buddhist geeks of a circle with the dots in it. Okay. <clears throat> in awareness meditation, as we've been talking, the goal here is to, is to let go of intention. We, uh, as Shenzhen Young mentioned in his uh, do nothing technique, if we notice an intention, we just drop the intention and we're not even holding an intention to drop intentions. Okay. This is how radical the practice is. We're, we're trying to let go of doing, let go into being and just resting in the experience of beingness of awareness. Um, so feelings might arise, but we let them be. We're, we're letting go of investigating them or letting go of uh, any analysis or breaking down of experience. So it's, it's more noticing and resting spontaneously here. Um, now, all kinds of things can happen when we're, we're practicing awareness meditation. We might notice that we're starting to do something. We have intentions, we're investigating, but then we see that and we just let go. So um, in the technique we're going to work with today, just noting emotions, as we're calling it, this is about disentangling from our emotions. Okay. And I want to read a, a little bit of a longer passage here from Jack Cornfield because it really encapsulates uh, perfectly what we're exploring today in this context. So this is from Path with Heart. And this is a part of the book where he's talking about what do we do with difficult experiences? Um, and so emotions can be sometimes difficult experiences. And uh, he says that uh, one principle and practice we do is we open to a full awareness of the feelings. Full awareness of the feelings, okay. It is the feeling level that controls most of our inner life, yet often we are truly unconscious of our feelings. When we have not learned to talk about feelings or even to be aware of them, our life remains entangled. In Buddhist psychology, bringing consciousness to feelings is critical for awakening. In a teaching called The Cycle of the Rising of Conditions, the Buddha explains how humans become entangled. It is the place of feeling that binds us or frees us. When pleasant feelings arise and we automatically grasp them, or when unpleasant feelings arise and we try to avoid them, we set up a chain reaction of entanglement and suffering. This perpetuates the body of fear. However, if we learn to be aware of feelings without grasping or uh, aversion, then they can move through us like changing weather. And we can be uh, free to feel them and move on like the wind. It can be a very interesting meditation exercise to focus specifically on our feelings for several days. We can name each one and see which ones we are afraid of, which uh, we are entangled by, which generates stories and how we become free. Free is not free from feelings, but free to feel each one and let it move on, unafraid of the movement of life. Okay, this is really great here for uh, this awareness meditation training. So open to full awareness of feelings. So a feeling arises, we're aware of it. And here we're emphasizing that let it, let it be, let it move. Uh, the unafraid of the movement of life means emotions aren't obstacles to awareness, okay? So there's a lot we can work with emotions, but this here is really, really wonderful for awareness meditation, but we can see how it can help us work with emotions in other contexts, for example, in healing, if there's more spaciousness or so more allowing inherently more accepting of whatever emotion is arising in this moment. So this practice of just noting emotions today, we're really doing a mindful awareness practice, okay? We're combining a little bit of mindfulness as a way to rest in awareness, okay, of feelings. So the mindfulness part is that we're gonna be noticing feelings and we're gonna be naming them, 
but we're going to let them be in awareness. We're going to come back to resting in awareness. Okay. So we're not going to continue. We're not going to try to maintain a vigilance. Okay. Uh, or do any investigating uh, and breaking down of experience. We're not, we don't have an expectation that we will feel anything in particular or at all. Okay. We're just here. A feeling might arise. And if it does arise, we can name it. But uh, whether it's a pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, neutral, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so the technique in, uh, specifically is really simple. We use the word just and then the name of the emotion, like one word, two words. Um, just here means, they can mean a few different things in English. Uh, just can mean kind of like singularly, like only this thing. Um, it could uh, mean just allowing, you know, letting something be, okay? There's kind of an implication there. And that's what really what work we're working with. Just emotions, just, just happiness, okay? And we're letting it be. Sometimes though, it could have a dismissive tone to it. Like, like we're trying to dismiss our feeling, to, to negate our feeling. That's not what we're doing here at all, okay? We're not trying to minimize, okay? Because that's getting entangled, really. If we're trying to say, ah, it's just anger, right? Then it's like, ah, it's not a big deal. No, 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 not that. It's more of an allowing whatever emotion to be present. So just confusion, just gratitude, just curiosity. Just sadness. That's the practice. Really simple form. Much like everything we're doing here in this training, the form is really as minimal as we can make it often. Um, enough to let us work with our experience because, you know, from the, from the get-go, if we can just say, just be, don't do anything, just, just be here resting in awareness. Okay, we do that. But obviously we're like, okay, well, I can't always do that. And, and some it's harder uh, it's hard to do that. So what can I work with? Well, this is one way we can work with part of our human experience, the emotional part. Um, and I really like the phrase, the phrase entangled and disentangled. Uh, Judith Blackstone uses it a lot in realization process because there's a sense of, again, like getting entangled in our experience. And we can feel how like an open quality in our being starts to collapse and disentangle isn't it getting rid of, it's just a, an allowing. So if, if we disentangle like a, uh, pieces of string, they're all still there. They're just not all wadded up. You know, we're always trying to disentangle these headphones, right? <laughs> it's a, you know, I, I, I want to use the headphones. I just don't want it to be in a ball of, uh, of, of a knot. Right. Okay. Um, so when, when we're working in this way, there's, we're disentangling, which means there's more space, there's more inherent allowing and accepting of what we're experiencing, just at a base level there is. Um, and with that, we, again, my experience is that we can take this into a healing environment, okay? In, in therapeutic contexts and healing emotional uh, wounds and trauma, you know, this is something that we can apply there. We're not working with that specifically today, but it can be a foundation for that. It can be supportive. So last thing I want to share with you is something I've already shared with you before. It's some pointing out instructions from self-liberation through seeing with naked awareness. And it's using the word thoughts a lot, right? Because that's kind of the Buddhist emphasis a lot is on thoughts and like emotions are going to be looked at as all these different components rather than like the word emotion. <laughs> but I want to, I'm going to read this, but I'm going to substitute thoughts with feelings. Okay. Since merely allowing feelings to settle into their own condition without trying to modify them in any way is sufficient, how can you say that you're not able to remain in a calm state? Since allowing feelings to be just as they are without trying to do anything about them is sufficient, how can you say that you're not able to do anything with regard to them? Since the arising of feelings and their being liberated occur simultaneously, how can you say that you're unable to apply an antidote? So it's interesting, any pointing out instructions, we've, I've shared uh, many versions, but 
but usually it's using the word thoughts. If you encounter some of those, try replacing the, the word thought with feelings and see how that registers in your experience. 